I am so excited you decided to click on this video because I have several Dollar Tree Spring farmhouse truly high-end DIYs that you're not going to want to miss. So if that's something you're interested in, then just keep watching. For the first DIY, we are going to take these wood hanging decor signs from Dollar Tree and I start by taking off the hangers and they're super easy to cut off. They're just jute hangers. Next, I'm going to take my jumbo popsicle sticks that I get from Walmart and I'm going to lay them out down the seams of each sign. So I'm going to lay the signs next to each other, obviously, and then I'm going to cut that second one so that way it will fit. And I'm also going to hold it up to another popsicle stick and cut another one down as well. That way I'm ready to go when I put my bead of hot glue down the seams. Now when you do this, you want to make sure you put your hot glue on and put your popsicle sticks on and before that hot glue dries, make sure that you push them together really nicely and evenly. Next I'm going to take my lightweight spackling from Dollar Tree and I'm going to fill those holes. Next, I'm going to take my unfinished wooden truck from Dollar Tree and I'm going to give that a good coat of my Dixie Belle Voodoo Stain in Tobacco Road. That is the color, Tobacco Road. Y'all, I love this stuff. I am in no way affiliated with Dixie Belle. I just truly love the products and I leave out the tires, but I do make sure to stain the hubcaps. I be sure to wipe off the excess stain and then I'm going to take a smaller brush. I'm going to take my ink Waverly chalk paint and I'm going to go ahead and paint those tires black. I'm then going to use that same brush and paint and I'm going to paint the bed of the truck. Next, I'm going to take my chip brush that I get from Amazon. I do have them linked down below for you guys in my Amazon shop. You'll see all of my links are now in one place and you can find my Amazon shop there. But I take my chip brush and some white Waverly chalk paint and I just dry brush all the way around all of the features of the truck. And then once I get done dry brushing the features, then I'm going to dry brush inside of the truck. I then dig in my stash and I found this little local market transfer. This is why I always tell you guys to grab the transfers when you see them if you like them because they do go out of stock as well as retire. This is an old retired transfer but I always stock up because um, I just love them so much and I know that I won't be able to find them again so I do grab a few at a time if at all possible um, and I go ahead and I transfer on that local market but I do not transfer on the circle around it. Next I'm going to sand down my lightweight spackling from the holes and then I'm going to give this sign a distressed coat of my white Waverly chalk paint. Now, as I always tell you guys, I'm just here for inspiration. If you do not like the distressed look, you can totally give it a good coat of paint. But I personally like the distressed look, so that's why I give it a distressed coat, obviously. I then dry it with my blow dryer, because you all know I'm super impatient. And then I'm going to take my bigger chip brush and my antique Waverly wax, and I'm going to start by lightly dry brushing the antique wax over my sign. I also go over those lines a little bit more heavy handed to make it look like it is three pieces of wood together even though it is 
I wanted to highlight those lines and then I just layer my dry brushing once my eyes were happy then I went ahead and drew a few little faux nail holes screw holes whatever you want to call it on either side with my pencil Next, I'm going to pull out my transfers. This is another super, super old one. This transfer was actually from 2018. So I pull it from my stash. I cut it away from the other transfer. And then I lay it to the top of my sign and transfer all that wording on with my black chalk paste. When I peel back that transfer look how gorgeous this turned out now i like the distressed look again i like that so i did let my paste dry a little bit before i pulled up my transfer but if you want your letters absolutely uh crisp then definitely pull that up right away Next, I go in my stash and I found this galvanized tag from Dollar Tree. It did come in a pack of two. So I just kind of hold that over the bed of my truck to see where I need to cut it. Can you guys guess what I'm about to make? If you can, let me know in the comments. So I am going to take this tag. I'm going to cut off the top of the tag. And then I'm going to bend my tag. So that way I have kind of like a little awning. Once I'm satisfied with the way it looks, I'm going to hold it up over my truck and then I do cut the excess off of this tag sign. Now be very careful you guys, I cut this with miter shear or no, tin snips, I almost called them miter shears. <laughs> <laughs> y'all know I can't talk or get it right sometimes but we'll get it right someday right <laughs> anyway I take my tin snips my husband actually gave these to me if you did not know my sweet handy husband is a handyman and so he has all kinds of stuff I'm super super grateful for him but I just cut that sign down that way the edge is not hanging over too much I didn't like the way that it looked when it was just bent in half um, but once I cut the excess off then I'm going to take a small dowel rod that I got from Dollar Tree I'm going to hold it up to the galvanized little awning and the back of my truck to see how big I needed the little stakes or um, the little pieces of wood to hold up the awning and then I cut that down to size. I also held that up to the other piece of my dowel and cut it to be completely even. I then sand my cut edges of my dowel rods smooth with my zip sander. Once again, you can find in my Amazon shop down below. Once I sanded them, then I took my chip brush and my Dixie Belle Voodoo stain and I also stained my dowel rods. Next, I'm going to hot glue my truck down to my sign and I make sure to hold my little awning pieces up to the truck before I glue it down to make sure that I glue it in the right spot and then I hot glue my dowels to either side of the awning. Next, I'm going to take these wooden little mini flower pots from Dollar Tree. I absolutely love these so much. You can use them for so many different things. And I wanted to cut these in half, so I tried to use my husband's Dremel, but it just wasn't working. I think I need to get a better wood bit. I'm not really too sure. But in order to cut these in half, it was a little bit tricky, but I just took my tin snips and cut on either side of the pot. Now, it did cut in several different pieces, but it didn't really bother me because I ended up gluing them back together. It was no big deal. So I just snipped on either side. It did crack the wood, and then I also had to take my tin snips, and these little pots have like a thicker piece of wood at the bottom base it's kind of like a cork it's not a cork but that's what it reminded me of so I just kind of cut into that and it snapped the pots the rest of the way now obviously like I said it did snap in several different pieces but I was able to glue them together with no problem
I tried to do this with just wood glue, but it definitely worked much better with a bead of wood glue as well as some hot glue. The wood glue is going to make sure that it stays together and stays together really nicely for good and the hot glue is going to hold it very quickly. Once I had all of my pots back together and I did put them together in half obviously that was the point of cutting them um, but then I go ahead and stain all of my little uh, half pots with my Dixie Belle Voodoo stain and I didn't like how dark it was without wiping off the excess so I do wipe the excess stain off. I'm going to use my chip brush and some white Waverly chalk paint and I'm going to dry brush all of my half pots. Next I'm going to dry brush the little pieces to the awning as well. I then glue down my awning to the back of the truck. Before I glue my pots down, I'm going to lay them in the back of my truck to see exactly where I want them. Then I'm going to take these florals from Dollar Tree and I just cut them apart. If you guys did not see my first spring DIY video, I did use these same florals and these same pots and I couldn't get enough of it so I knew that I wanted to use the same combination. And then once I was satisfied with the placement of my pots, I go ahead and glue them down with my hot glue. I then arrange all my little flowers into the pots before I glue them down as well. And then once I was satisfied with the placement, I go ahead and glue those in the pots. And I just kind of, you know, figure it out as I go. Once I had them in there and I like I kept holding up the sign and looking at it and then adding more and more flowers as I went because I wanted my pots to be nice and full. Um, so you just do the same thing and do it until your eyes are happy. And to finish this absolutely stunning sign, I'm going to take my antique wax and my chip brush and I'm just going to dab some of that wax over the awning to make it look old and rustic. Once again, if you do not like this look, totally leave it out but you guys I cannot get over how gorgeous this sign turned out I am so excited to hear what you guys think of DIY number one down in the comments below If you guys are enjoying these DIYs, I would greatly appreciate if you would share it out, subscribe if you haven't already. I would love to have you become part of my crafty family. You guys, we are so close to 100K subscribers. When I say that, I just cannot believe it, and I know that we can do it together. So again, share this out, subscribe if you haven't already. I cannot wait to see where this next chapter leads us, and with that being said, I want you to know how much I appreciate you, and let's jump back into today. DIYs. For DIY number two, I'm going to take this wreath that I got from Walmart. I previously used this wreath in a different video and I actually thought that I got it from Dollar Tree because it was, I have my grapevine wreaths in a different spot. The ones I bought from Walmart were in a different spot and for some reason I had the last one in the spot where I had my Dollar Tree wreaths at. So for some reason I thought it was Dollar Tree's. It, I was wondering it look kind of thick so after the fact I realized that I was totally wrong but 
no big deal. I did get these from Walmart. Um, and I will also leave some down in my Amazon shop for you as well because I also just ordered more because this is my absolute last one. So I got these bunches of florals from Walmart as well. And I just started by separating all of the different floral picks in a pile. That way I could evenly distribute them around my wreath. So I start with the most bulky greenery first. And I just arrange that around my wreath. And then in the empty spots, I add the different greenery. Once I was satisfied with the way the green florals looked, then I'm going to take these gorgeous little pink flowers. I'm going to take the smaller ones off the pick because this had bigger bunches as well as smaller bunches. So I add the smaller bunches randomly and evenly, if you will, around the wreath. And then I also took these gorgeous blue florals from Dollar Tree. I cut those apart and added them to the smaller um, pink florals. And then I also add the bigger pink florals. And you guys, look how freaking stunning this turned out. For a spring wreath, I just cannot get over how gorgeous this is. And this is why I tell you guys to step outside of your comfort zone because this is not a wreath that I normally would put together. So anyway, moving on to the next step, I'm going to take this tag sign from Dollar Tree, this unfinished wood tag sign that we used in the beginning of the video. I'm also going to take my blush transfer and lay that over the sign. I'm going to mark it and then cut that down with my utility knife. And it's super easy to do. All you have to do is just score it a few times, bend it, and then cut it the rest of the way from the back, and then sand down the edges smooth. Next, I'm going to give this a distress coat. Surprise, surprise. Once again, all the way around my sign as well as the front of the sign. Again, if you don't like it, just give it a good coat of paint. Now, again, you guys, uh, as I always tell you, I'm just here for inspiration. If you like, you can totally switch up the colors. You can switch up the greenery or the florals. It's totally up to you. Once my paint was completely dry, of course I hit it with my blow dryer because y'all know I am so impatient. I then take my large chip brush and my antique wax and I once again distress this all the way around the sign. I also like to take the side of my brush and make little faux knots as well to make it look more realistic. I then lay my blush transfer over my sign, making sure to smooth it out really well. That way it doesn't bleed. And then I transfer on the border and the word blessed with my black chalk paste. And then the greenery, I transfer that on with my pesto chalk paste. Now, if you guys have never worked with paste before, I highly recommend it. Not only is it so satisfying and fun, but y'all, one jar of paste lasts forever because you only need a tiny tiny bit to use with your transfers and then you're going to squeegee off the excess back into your jar so when I tell you you don't use much trust me these jars last forever so once I peel back that transfer I reveal this absolutely stunning image and sign and then I'm going to lay it down on my wreath of course, I figure out the placement before I attach it. I wasn't too sure if I wanted it on the side or directly across, and I did ultimately decide to put it right in the middle, and then I just secured it with some hot glue. I then took this ribbon that I got back at fall time, and I just create a very simple bow. All you have to do is cut a piece. You want to, like, fold it kind of like a cancer ribbon and then you're going to pinch it in the middle and tie it and cut off the excess jute. Next I'm just going to cut the end smooth and hot glue that down to the bottom. That was it for this DIY, you guys. Look how gorgeous this spring 
farmhouse wreath turned out. I absolutely love it and I cannot wait to display it in my new home for years to come. Let me know down in the comments, would you guys have changed anything up about this wreath or do you love it just the way it is? For DIY number three, I'm going to start off with a scrap piece of canvas that I got from the canvases that I took apart for my last couple previous DIYs. If you guys missed those, I will leave it in the cards in the right hand corner. But I'm just going to take these little signs that I got from Hobby Lobby and I'm going to just trace that onto my canvas. I'm then going to cut that out and also make three more of the same size. Next, of course, I'm going to dry brush all of these little pieces with my Waverly Antique Wax. I just wanted these to look old and weathered and rustic. Once again, I know I sound like a broken record. If you don't like that, then you can skip this step. Once I was done with the first one, then I repeat that step for all three of the remaining canvases. With that same chip brush and my Dixie Belle Voodoo stain, I'm going to dry brush all the way around these frames. Now these were already like distressed, but I just felt the need to distress it even more. If you guys have been around, y'all know I love distressing. So I take those remaining pots that we used in the first DIY and on two of the canvases, I'm going to put one of the bigger pots on one canvas and then the two smaller ones on one and then I'm also going to take this greenery that I had in my stash I'm going to cut it down to size of course until my eyes were happy and I put those little greenery pieces in my pots And once again, you guys, this is a really easy project. Do not get intimidated. I know a lot of you guys get intimidated by DIY because you think you can't do it. You think it's going to turn out ugly. And trust me, you guys, you're a lot stronger and more crafty than you think. Crafting is definitely a learned skill and you can never get better if you don't try. So start off with little easy projects like this and work your way up to bigger projects. I know in my heart that you guys can do anything you set your mind to because I used to always tell myself the same thing and then once I started to do things I figured out hey like wow I'm actually pretty good at this so step outside of your comfort zone like I do and you'd be amazed at what you can do so anyway I put more of those little pink florals in my little mini pots and set those aside and then I take this butterfly transfer and transfer that on to the third canvas with my black paste. I blow dry that with my blow dryer to make sure it's nice and dry and then I transfer on this number 34 doing the ombre effect with my gold paste and black paste. Once again, I make sure that's really, really dry and look how gorgeous this is. So once again, I set that aside and for the last one, I'm going to take this little design and transfer that on again with the ombre effect gold and black. And then once that was completely dry, you're going to see here in a minute that I do layer that with a butterfly using my black paste. And look here, you guys, this is why I freaking love Chalk Couture so much. I love it with my whole heart and soul. Not only is it so easy and quick to use, you guys, I don't have time to use a Cricut. I don't have time to trace things on and then go over it with a paint pen. I wish I did because trust me, I would save a lot of money. But 
I just don't have that kind of time. And this looks so professional and high end that I just cannot get enough of it. My love language is chalk couture and ketones. If you did not know, <laughs> if you did not know, ketones help me lose 80 pounds of pure fat. You guys, I can't even believe that two years later, I feel and look as amazing as I do. And now I help you guys lose weight and feel good again too or if you just need better energy focus and mood then ketones are for literally everybody so just reach out to me text my number um, and I would love to help you either earn money sharing your story and helping other people to do the same thing or just to feel good again so text my number the word biz or or ketones and let me help you. I literally love it so much. But anyway, all I did was glue my frames together and then I added my little canvases to the little hangers. And you guys, how stunning is this little faux vase? I don't know what you want to call it, but I absolutely love the way that this turned out. This was another one of those projects that I had no idea where I was going with it. I just pulled out these picture frames and kind of figured it out as I went along but I absolutely love the end result and I cannot wait to hear which DIY in today's video was your favorite down in the comment section below. For the last and final DIY, if you guys are still here, you're the real OGs, leave me a butterfly emoji down in the comments so I know that you guys are still around. So anyway, I'm going to take this Christmas sign that I got from Dollar Tree. I'm going to cut off the Santa hat as well as pull off the little details on the front. And then I'm going to sand the edge down smooth once I cut it down. And I'm going to give it a distress coat of my white Waverly chalk paint. Next, I'm going to dry it really well with my blow dryer because, again, I'm so impatient. Y'all, when I'm DIYing and I'm on a roll, I just want to go to the next step. I ain't got time to be watching paint dry. I don't know about y'all. <laughs> <laughs> but I ain't got time for that. So anyway, once it was completely dry, then once again, I'm going to use the ombre effect with my gold at the top and black at the bottom. Now the trick to get really nice crisp images when you're chalking is to make sure your paste is really stirred up. You're going to chalk with nice even um, pressure and then when you pull up your transfer you want to pull it up nice and slow to reveal that absolutely stunning image so I'm going to set that aside and then you guys look how cool this is so I take my butterfly that was in the same transfer and I will leave all of the chalk items that I used down below in the comments um, in the pinned comment as well as the description box and I'm going to take a black piece of cardstock I'm going to fuzz my transfer really well and then I'm going to transfer that butterfly on with the gold in the middle my rose gold next and then white on the edges and look how stunning this looks on this black cardstock so once that was completely dry then I'm going to take my Cricut scissors because they're really really sharp and I can get in all those little details and I'm going to cut my butterfly um, right on the edges and look how stunning oh my god I just can't I can't get enough of it I love it and it, once again you guys if I didn't want to make spring decor, I literally would make farmhouse decor every single video. I mean, let me know in the comments. Are you guys for that or against that? <laughs> but, you know, I try to appeal to more people. And I know farmhouse is not everybody's forte. So, you got to switch it up every once in a while. So, anyway... 
the point is I'm I'm always shocked when I step outside of my comfort zone but anyway I just kind of manipulate my butterfly's wings to look like it's flying and then I wrap some jute around the top randomly and I hot glue that to start and then cut it and hot glue it once again once I was satisfied with the way that the jute looked and then y'all know I'm impatient so I skipped the dry brushing I totally forgot I got a little ahead of myself I should have did that before the jute but hey you live and you learn right so I dry brush at the top and the bottom and through the sign and then I glue my butterfly down at the bottom now I had these little letters these um scrabble letters from dollar tree and i was gonna put like live on there i also was thinking about putting breathe but i didn't have enough letters so i just left it plain let me know in the comments would you guys have put the um scrabble letters or do you love it just the way it is so that is it for this video you guys thank you so so much for being here thank you so so much for joining me i want you to know how much i appreciate you guys don't forget to share this out subscribe if you haven't already y'all we are so close to 100k and i know that with your help that we will get there in no time so if nobody has told you today you are absolutely stunning you are worthy you are gorgeous you literally can do anything you set your mind to coming from an addict who is almost nine years sober if I can do it I know that you can do it as well if you guys want any ketone information on how I just recently lost 80 pounds how I make money sharing my story and growing on social media text my number on the screen the word biz or ketones or if you guys want to get everything on the chalk site at 40 percent off text me the word chalk you can also text me to say hi and to get alerts as well of all my videos and lives with that being said i love you all so much i'll catch you in the next one bye check out the videos that are popping up here to your left while you're waiting on my next upload or join the diy fam here to your right